Hello, my name's Trevor Young from Edelman Australia and um, I'm just about to have a chat with Brian Solis, uh, who's been the keynote speaker at the PR Directions National Conference here at the Hilton Hotel in Sydney. Uh, Brian, you're out in Australia. Uh, welcome. Thank you. You've uh, got a new book, Hot Off the Presses. Uh, what can you tell us about it? The End of Business as Usual. It just released on the 18th. It's brand new. It's, uh, it's quite literally hot off the presses. I changed the last chapter right before it went to press, and uh, I'm excited that it's out. The book is really written to help executives, professionals, regardless of what industry you're in, understand that there's an emergence of a different type, a different hybrid of consumer, one who isn't just online, but they're incredibly connected, and how they find and share information is not at all like the customers or the consumers before them. And how they um, not only make decisions, but how they influence decisions is very different. So the first half of the book is sort of designed to show how these individuals connect, why, where, how do you figure out where they are and why they matter to your business. Uh, it introduces all kinds of different technologies, not just social media. This shows that they're incredibly connected and here's how. And then the last half of the book is really written to show businesses, how it's prescriptive, what you need to do about it. And really, at the end, what it comes down to is you have to change the culture of the organization to be adaptive, right? Because these connected consumers, they're not going away. Their numbers are only growing exponentially. And at some point, they're driving the experiences of those who they're connected to based on their experience with you. And if you're not steering those experiences, you're reacting to them. And so really, at the end of the book, you're creating a whole new foundation for the future of business. Brian, I'd love to get your take on what do you think the, uh, the state of the PR industry is? Uh, don't expect you to know the, uh, the Australian industry very well, but generally the PR profession. Is it in good shape or have we still got a fair bit of work to do uh, with all the new media that's happening? Well, it's, it's good times for the industry as long as they embrace the opportunity in a good way. And by that I mean social media, not just public relations, I mean, but all of marketing, all of advertising. It's, it's customer service. It's lauded as sort of the great savior, right? But I, I always say, uh, I've written articles about this. I've, I've done research on this. Social media isn't going to save your industry. It's not going to save your business. It requires a, a whole new philosophy, a whole new methodology about how you're going to approach it to use it within, for example, public relations. So, for example, I have studied a lot of use of not just public relations, but just communications and marketing in general. And I have, I have to say that in general, it's mostly antisocial in its approach. It's a one-to-many message. It's still lacking genuine engagement. It's a build it and they will come type of mentality. And really, it's a great opportunity. It's a wonderful time to be in public relations or marketing in general because you actually have an opportunity to engage with the customer in a much more relevant way, to give them the information that they seek, to give them direction for public relations to actually be the new influencer, not just a propagator of messages, but actually a true, genuine influencer. What does it take to be a really good PR practitioner today? How can the PR people of today be effective at what they do? Well, it starts with being hyper-connected, right? And it, and it starts with understanding who you're trying to reach and why, the value that you're trying to deliver, and how. Um, more importantly, it takes sort of forgetting, I mean, especially if we're talking about social, almost forgetting everything that you've learned in traditional public relations. I know that uh, that's probably going to be met with a lot of objection or resistance, but it's what I had to do, right? When I started my agency, I, I, I was starting in 1999 specifically to engage with individuals directly in online networks, right? And I looked at everything I had, what I knew, uh, the tools that I had, um, the approaches that I would take, and everything is designed to work against genuine engagement and influence in those networks. So I had to relearn everything, right? And I had already been practicing it for, I think at that time, already eight years. But it was also a blessing in disguise, right? I designed an entirely new agency model from scratch that would work within the specifics. And I spent the, the next, you know, I, I, I closed it when I joined Altimeter Group in, uh, what was, 2010. Every year, iterating on that model. And that was a long time to iterate and learn. And by the time I ended up, uh, as, as my goodbye to the industry, I wrote the Hybrid Theory, theory Manifesto, and which is still available for everyone who wants to read it. Just Google it that in a three-part series design, really designs it from an architecture standpoint what it is that you need to do. Here's how it worked and why. The roles, um, how you measure success, how you sell against this, uh, and that really is the hybrid theory is what tomorrow's and even today's PR professional is going to have to look like. And it's not just PR, by the way. It's an incredibly com competitive field where advertising is now looking at hybrid. Uh, we're looking at marketing 
as embracing hybrid, and by hybrid I mean creating content, creating online experiences, creating apps, games, uh, and then engaging with individuals around that content to make sure that you know, they not only go viral, but they cause change. So it's, it's, it's opening the door for a lot of competition, and public relations has a natural shoe-in because of the idea of public relations, but it requires, it requires a whole new infrastructure and methodology to support it. Brian, I'd love to get your take on the, the whole issue of ROI. Uh, I was sitting in your keynote speech and it was uh, a fantastic uh, hour and a bit of a lot of good information. You, when you got talking about ROI, you used the term resonance a lot. What can you tell us about resonance as it pertains to ROI? Resonance is more of a KPI than it is ROI, right? Re the idea of resonance is how do you create content or engagement strategies that can resonate within the stream, right? If you think about the social stream, say TweetDeck, for example, I mean, just, I call it the slot machine of attention. Things are flying through it really quickly all the time, and people have multiple columns open. So the chance of you seeing something that I share once is probably very nil. But if I share it more than once, or if I have someone who shares it that you're connected to and they share it, I'm increasing the exposure or the opportunity for you to see it. So if I can design my content to be resident, to have resonance for people not just to consume it but to share it and reshare it and reshare it and reshare it, then that increases the, the opportunity for it to be seen, right? And especially in social media where attention it comes is it's a precious commodity. Right? So it's, it's a strategy and it's a metric. How long did it stay alive? How many people engaged with it, responded to it, uh, retweeted it, uh, shared it, uh, commented on it? How many people interacted with it? That's, a, that's the resonance metric. But the R and ROI is something much more profound for a business. And it's interesting, too, because if you look at marketing, they really haven't been held to the standard of what's the ROI of that billboard or that advertising campaign. They just went with soft metrics. How many people did it reach? Did we hit the right demographic? What was the ROI on the bottom line? I don't know. I mean, no, Old Spice can tell you the volume of, of sales increase, but how much of a percentage of that was due to the Super Bowl commercial versus videos, I'm sure they know. But what I, my point is is that you have to define the R before you can try to measure it, before you even introduce a campaign. The R is the return. What do you want as the return? Leads, conversion, uh, sentiment shifts, uh, perception, thought leadership. Define it first and realize that at the end of the day, you're going to have multiple R's for multiple different approaches, and you're going to be measuring each of those differently. But the point is, is that you can measure it, and that's why it's so important to design these with intention. Uh, you're a busy man, Brian. You're, you finish up uh, here shortly. You're off to San Francisco today. Uh, and tomorrow then you fly out to Mexico. I understand you're having a bit of a uh, confab with Mr. Ashton Kutcher. Um, what can you tell us about that? Any, any good stuff coming out of that little meeting? Yeah, it's hosted by Red 10 and the entire discussion is around disruptive technology, not emerging technology, but disruptive technology and how it's affecting and influencing consumer behavior. So not just how they make decisions, but how they're making purchases. So real big focus on social commerce, for, exa uh, for example, mobile commerce, uh, syndicated commerce, which is a new big thing. So it's not just about social, it's about all of the channels that consumers are embracing. And Ashton is, uh, you know, he has an agency called Catalyst, so it's not just a production company. I actually used to do work with him uh, back in my creative days where we would use social media uh, to help some really wonderful companies do some great things. Uh, and he's going to be there sort of kicking off where everything is going, uh, and I'm going to follow it up with what we need to do. Excellent. Well, it's been a pleasure having you here, and uh, safe travels. Cheers. Thanks, Trevor. Thank you.